Alrighty, so now that we have gone through and seen everything in the standard and extended panels in the Arturia Synclavier V, we can now move on into the graphic screen mode and see the controls there. So I set us back to the simple sign template so that we just have the simple sine wave again. And to get into the graphic screen, we can move over and press this SCR button in the top right. And then we'll see this little animation that moves us over to this screen which mimics the screen on the old Synclavier. But what we're going to be able to do in here is have a more deep control of things like the envelopes, the key dynamics, time slices, mixer, mods, effects, and settings. And they'll be presented to us in a more visual and interactive sort of way as opposed to the knobs that we saw in the other panels. Some of the effects we'll see in here affect the same parameters in the same way as we saw in the extended and standard panels, but there are parameters that must be dealt with in the graphic screen because that's the only place we can access them. So to begin, we're going to take a look at the envelopes tab, and what we can see in here is we have each of our partials that we can select, and those will be the same partials that we selected in the extended panel, and we'll be controlling the same amplitude envelope and harmonic envelope, just in a different manner. But if we go through the controls, we can take a look down here, and we can click and drag to change the delay, the attack, the peak percentage, the decay, the sustain level, and then the release. So we can shape the envelope that the amplitude of our partial will follow. But we don't have to use the settings down here. We can also just click and drag on these little dots, and they will move to wherever we click and drag them. Or we could double click and type in numbers if we want to do it that way. And as you can see at the top of the screen, we have a timeline and zoom window. And what we can do with that is click and push up to zoom out or down to zoom in. And it'll zoom in on whatever time you are selected. And this is measured in seconds. So we have zero up to 120 maximum seconds if we turn everything up to the maximum level that they can be. We can have our entire envelope last 120 seconds which isn't something that generally happens, but if there does come a time that we do need to make such a long envelope, we do have the option of doing just that. And then the minimum amount of time that we can see in this area is going to be down to 450 milliseconds or 0.45 seconds if you want to deal with a very short envelope and see that on the window. But we can also just go up and double click to reset to the default amount of 5 seconds. So with that we can easily draw in whatever shape we want our amplitude to follow. And you can see that when I hit the key it shows a little purple dot that follows this envelope. And while we're here there's a little technical thing that I want to mention. As far as the attack and decay times will be thought about. And this is just a speed thing related to the peak and sustain that we'll show. But basically when the peak is at 100 then the attack time shown will actually be one second. So if we hold a key, it'll take one second to get to the peak. But if we turn down the peak, it'll take a little bit less time to get there because the speed of the ramp will remain at this speed, but it'll travel a shorter distance. And that goes the same for the sustain and decay just in the opposite way, if the sustain is zero, then the decay amount will actually be in seconds. But as you go up, it'll take less time to get to the greater than zero level that it is. So in most scenarios, that won't really make too much of a difference, but if you're trying to be very precise with the timing, that's something to note and be worth knowing about. But at any rate, we set the amplitude, and now let's take a look at the harmonic envelope, which again is the control of the FM. So if we have no FM, that won't make any difference. But if we go back to the extended panel and turn up some FM amount, we'll be able to see just that with the same envelope control settings, we'll change the shape and timing of the FM. And all of these controls will work the same way as we did with the amplitude envelope, just dealing with a different parameter. Again, as I said, these controls will affect whatever control for whatever partial 
on the extended panel. So if we turned up the delay for a partial one, we could see easily that our delay just went up in the graphics screen and that would work vice versa. But one thing that we can also see over here is we have a quick and easy access to select any other partial that we have over on the side here and quickly edit the envelopes for those. So if we wanted to have multiple partials going up at different times, we could select them and do just that. Solo certain ones. We would have to, of course, turn up those partials in the volume of the extended panel. But we can see the same way that it did affect these, and they are grayed out when we have them soloed or muted in the graphic screen. But now we have each of these different ones working in their own way and together. So we could program different characteristics for each of the partials or different pitches even, any sort of parameters we want to edit and change the envelope so that they can come in at different times or have different travels with FM or anything like that, and then see how they work together in a very visual way. We can also select multiple partials at a time if we hold shift and click between two of them, and then we can edit those at the same time. We can see that this is going to move at a ratio. So when we move something, the attack for instance, if we set that at 0.5, whatever length we have selected, if we turn that up to one, it'll double the rest of them as well. But we can make whatever changes we want and have it affect all of the different delay, attack, peak, decay, sustain, release for the amplitude or harmonic envelopes. And then also we could select non-adjacent ones using the control or command key and then edit those as well. So it's just a quick way to set these parameters. And that covers the envelopes tab. So now we're going to move over to the key dynamics, which is a pretty simple property to play with. And all this is going to do is make it so that each of the partials will have an active area that you'll play on the keyboard. As you can see, if I play certain keys, they'll light up and show me what those keys are. And we're just going to be selecting where each of the partials will be active. So you can click and drag at the bottom here. You'll see that you'll have a hand and you can drag the area and what note you want this partial to begin playing. If I play above it or in this area, it will be on. And if I play below, there'll be no sound, but I could also go up to the top and have it fade and it'll just get quieter as we get to that point and we can do that from the top as well set a top key and be able to fade to different sections if a partial gets too harsh at a certain area or you just want to have it evolve in different places on the keyboard you can set that here have different ones fade in at different points so that you have different character to sounds at different points of the keyboard, different envelopes, or whatever different parameters you want to be active, or at whatever certain volume level that you want at whatever point of the keyboard. And that's the gist of it. It's nothing too complex to get a grasp on. Just a nice little way to split our keyboard or make some layers in certain ways. So with that, we covered what we needed to in this video, and we're ready to move on to the other parts of the graphics mode in the next videos. So I will see you then.